Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to continue our discussion about planemos in our solar system. In the previous video I showed you what all of them look like, all 42 of them, but in today's video I'm going to actually give you an idea of where they are actually located in relation to our sun and of course our planet Earth. Enjoy this video and please subscribe if you still haven't. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so we're actually going to be using Universe Sandbox 2 here to try to basically locate all 42 of the planemos. And the first few are going to be very, very easy. So once again, planemos are planetary objects that have achieved um, so-called hydrostatic equilibrium, making them spherical. Like, here we go. This is the first one, Mercury. And most of them you'll be very familiar with, but there's a few that you may have never heard of. So we have Mercury, Venus, and Earth. These are planemos, of course. These are spherical objects that are planetary. Uh, but Earth obviously has another planemo um, orbiting around it, which doesn't actually show in this particular simulation. But you may have guessed what this planemo is. It is, of course, our beautiful moon. I'm going to actually slow down this a little bit and add the moon at a distance of about 300,000 kilometers away from Earth. So that's uh, another planet right here. So we have one, two, three, four. Mars is the fifth. Mars doesn't actually have um, any spherical satellites, uh, so it doesn't really have any planet orbit orbiting around it. But there's another one right here, Ceres. Ceres is a dwarf planet, and it's actually spherical enough to have achieved, um, or uh, massive enough to have achieved a spherical shape and, of course, hydrostatic equilibrium. So this is Planemo number um, six. Then we're moving on to Jupiter, and this is where things get a little bit more complicated. I'm going to switch it to a different simulation that shows us all of the moons of different planets. And we're going to go to Jupiter. Planemo number seven is Jupiter. Uh, but around Jupiter, there is actually at least four more um, spherical objects, massive enough to become spherical, orbiting around um, as moons, essentially. And you may have already heard of them, because they are actually very, very, very famous. These are Galilean moons. Uh, they were discovered by Galileo hundreds of years ago. And the first one here is Io. Io is a volcanic moon, very, very beautiful. This is what it actually looks like. Uh, then we also have um, Europa, which is a very interesting moon that we want to explore one day because we think that underneath all of this is a liquid ocean that may harbor life. There might be some life here. Then we have Ganymede. This is a very, very large moon. For some reason here, it seems to have a lot of atmosphere, which is actually not very realistic because it doesn't really have this much atmosphere. It really should just have almost nothing. So we're gonna put it, uh, change it to zero. Um, although it did look a lot more beautiful with the atmosphere. Ganymede is actually so large in terms of the actual diameter that it's even bigger than uh, Mercury in size. It's not as massive as Mercury, but it is bigger in size. So you can actually put Mercury inside of it and it will disappear. Uh, and lastly, we have Callisto. Once again, there is for some reason atmosphere here, but there really shouldn't be. But Callisto is the fourth moon um, of Jupiter and is, of course, um, not only a Galilean moon, but is also a planemo. So let's actually get rid of the atmosphere here once again, just to give you an idea of what it really, really looks like. All right, so we we're going to move on to the next system. So there were five planemos in this system. Um, and the next one is actually the one with the most planemos, Saturn system. So obviously this uh, planet itself, Saturn itself is a planemo, but it also has quite a lot of uh, various planemos orbiting around it. As a matter of fact, there is actually seven of them here. So in total, this system has eight planemos. Uh, the first one is right here, Mimas. This is the first planemo, a spherical object that orbits relatively close to Saturn. Uh, the second one is going to be right here, Enceladus. So this, this right here is Enceladus. Uh, then we have Tethys, which is right here. This is what Tethys looks like. It's a very interesting looking object, very interesting looking moon um, th that kind of actually, I guess, sort of resembles our moon, but it's a lot more jagged and a lot more rugged. Uh, then we have Dione, 
Uh, once again, for some reason, there is atmosphere on Daini, but it really shouldn't have any. But this actually looks very beautiful with the atmosphere. But we're going to remove that, making it more realistic looking. And then we have Rhea, which is right there in the corner. So that's Rhea. This is what Rhea looks like. Um, th but that's not it. There's actually two more. And uh, one of them I can't seem to see anywhere because it's, it's actually a little bit farther away. Uh, but I think... Oh, there it is. Yapitos. There is Yapitos. This is number six. And number seven is my favorite and is one of the best moons that we have in our solar system. It is, of course, the moon called Titan. And Titan is interesting for many, many reasons. One of which, of course, is that it has very thick atmosphere of about 1.2 atmospheric pressures. But also because... Um, We've observed some really interesting uh, irregularities about its atmosphere that somehow may actually suggest that there's maybe there just maybe there's some sort of a crazy exotic life on its surface. But it's also very, very cold there, so maybe not. So that was Saturn. We're going to go to the next planet now, which of course is Uranus. And Uranus, except for itself, um, has five uh, more planets orbiting around it. And you can see that this is actually a very, very interesting orbital pattern here they're actually moving around it in this way unlike in other systems where they move around this way um but anyway so let's go through these planets so you can actually see them as well so we have miranda which is right there on top this is uh this is a very kind of an interesting spherical looking object but we don't really know much about uh, miranda or other objects in this particular system because we haven't really visited this for a very long time and most of the probes usually go to jupiter or saturn but um, we don't really go that as far as Uranus or Neptune, or at least yet. We haven't really been here since a Voyager 2 mission, and these are the only pictures that we were able to collect back in the days. Um, so except for Miranda, there is four more. There is Umbriel right here. Very beautiful moon as well. Uh, especially here because it does have a bit of atmosphere. But it's very, very pretty. Um, then we have this Titania which is kind of, I guess, like Titan, but it's fem feminine version of it. Or, uh, it. It is obviously very small. It doesn't really have any at atmosphere on it. Then there is Oberon, which is right here. Also a spherical object. And lastly, we have Ariel, which is actually something I missed before. There it is. There is Ariel as well. Uh, so these are the five planemos here. Um, and Neptune is the six. It's in the middle. Then we're going to go to Neptune, and there's really um, only two planemos in this system. Neptune itself, of course, and its rebellious um, satellite known as Triton that you can see orbiting against the flow, uh, basically separately from everything else. So it's mostly because it was probably captured a long time ago by Neptune, so it was probably a planemo that came from somewhere else, maybe even from outside of our solar system. But we won't really know anything about Triton until we actually go to Neptune and try to land there. Uh, but yeah, so Triton is orbiting around Neptune, and this, these two are the planemos in this particular system. Now, to show you the other uh, planemos, I'll have to go to a different simulation here. And I think I have to choose the one that has all possible dwarf planets. Let's see if we can actually maybe find all of the planemos here. This is going to be very challenging because, as you can see, there's so many different objects. A lot of asteroids, a lot of um, minor planets orbiting around everywhere. So this might be quite a challenge. But the first one I obviously want to find is uh, Pluto, which I might not be able to find here. There's just way too much stuff going on. Um, a lot of different asteroids are basically located in an orbit similar to Pluto. And so they are technically in the Kuiper's belt, but because Pluto's orbit is so uh, similar to them, and because there's just too many of them, I don't really know if I'll be able to see it. So maybe I'll just show you Pluto from the regular system first. I'll just go to the regular solar system. And uh, we're going to be able to find Pluto here pretty easily because it's right there. Now, Pluto has two planemos, or Pluto's system has two planemos. There's obviously Pluto, but there's also its satellite, although technically it would be its companion, known as Charon. Uh, and, okay, he just flew away, but there we go. I'm gonna place it right there. So both Pluto and Charon, they're relatively similar in size, and they are technically uh, dual objects, because they're, you wouldn't really be calling Charon a moon, because it is just too close to the size and to the mass of Pluto. So this would probably be more of a, 
a dual dwarf planet system rather than an, an actual uh, planetary system or dwarf planetary system with a satellite. So there's two here. Then there's another one right here called Orcus. And Orcus, um, if you watched the previous video or if you watched my uh, Orcus video, is essentially anti-Pluto. It has the opposite orbit and is always on the opposite side of Pluto, but it has very, very similar orbital parameters. So basically, it's like a mirror image of Pluto. And so this is Orcus, yet another Planemo in our system. Uh, then we have another object here somewhere that is called Ixion. And Ixion is actually right there. Uh, so in, the, in this case, it's kind of close to Pluto, but when you really think about it, this is like super, super far away. Earth is right there. Earth and the Sun is right here. This is like several times the distance, so they are quite far away from each other. So they'll never really see each other or they'll never really meet. But essentially, this is yet another Planemo in our solar system that we've discovered in the last few years. This is actually a relatively recent discovery as well. Then this object right here, 2002 um, 2MS4, it doesn't really have a cool name just yet, even though it was discovered quite a long time ago, but this is yet another Planemo, it's another spherical object that is massive enough to achieve hydrostatic equilibrium, and it is quite far away from everything as well, so this is once again an object that will probably never be explored, or if we do explore it, it's going to be quite a long time, because it is pretty far away from everything, it's far away from Pluto, it's far away from every other object as well. But right next to it, you can see there's another object called Quawar. This is yet another Planemo and yet another really interesting object. Um, this one does have a moon, so we actually know its mass relatively accurately as well. Two more objects are Varuna, which is also in uh, Kuiper's belt, also very far away from everything else. And uh, I just saw it a second ago, but it's already disappeared. This right here, 2005 5UQ513. Once again, not a cool name but nevertheless a cool object, a relatively large object. Uh, all of these objects are so large as a matter of fact that if they were to ever come to Earth, they would basically cause some catastrophic destruction. Nobody would basically survive because most of these objects are close to about a thousand kilometers in diameter, which is something like um, 200 times bigger than the asteroid that uh, destroyed the, not destroyed the dinosaurs, but co possibly caused the extinction of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. So it, it is a very, very, very massive and very large object. Now we have two more unnamed objects. One of them is right here, 2007 um, 7OR10. That's its orbit that you can see. Uh, once again, quite a unique orbit. Um, not many other objects have this particular orbit. And another one of these unnamed objects is this, 2007-7UK126. So it has a very, uh, almost uh, the opposite orbit of the previous object. Very unique as well, and very, very far away from everything. So, for us to visit all of these objects, we would actually have to design a mission to go directly there. We can't really visit all of them because they're just so far away from each other. Um, so we would need to actually find a reason to go here, because otherwise I don't think we'll ever be able to see what they actually look like. So these, uh, these are the unnamed objects, and we, have, we still have a few named objects as well, and I'm actually trying to find them. So there's Maki Maki right there. Now, here in this game, it doesn't actually look very realistic because Maki Maki is a very kind of a flat object because it spins so fast. Here it's represented as, um, as a kind of a um, spherical object. Uh, then there's also Haumea, once again, a flat-ish object, uh, and Haumea is located very close to Maki Maki, so right there. Uh, close in relation to other objects in Kuiper's belt, but definitely not close in, in terms of Sun, Earth. So because this is actually several astronomical units away, this would take like years to get from. Um, and then we have a very large dwarf planet known as Ares. This is a, an object that might be as big as Pluto, because we're still not exactly sure how big it is, uh, but it is basically a very, very massive and a very large object as well. Um, we have this really awesome object known as Sedna, which is probably one of the farthest objects we have so far. Uh, it might change soon, but currently this, this object has a very, very interesting, very eccentric orbit that you can kind of see right here, very, very far away from everything. And uh, lastly, I think I'm missing one, one more, this number 42 that I can't seem to find anywhere, and that object is known um, as Salacia. 
And to find Talatia, I had actually had to go to a slightly different simulation because it wasn't available in the main one. So here it is. Here's Talatia uh, in relation to everything else. So once again, kind of far away from everything, just kind of by itself orbiting around uh, the sun in a relatively eccentric but also relatively inclined orbit. Uh, so there it is. This is the object number 42 known as Salacia. So that's the 42 Planemus in our solar system. And now you kind of know where they're located. So for the most part, they're either part of the uh, planetary system where they're basically moons of planets or they're very, very large objects uh, known as minor planets or dwarf planets orbiting in the Kuiper's belt. Now, we're definitely going to discover a lot more of these Kuiper belt objects, so this number 42 will definitely increase uh, with time, uh, especially if we find objects like Planet 9, for example. But for now, this is the objects that we know of and that we are almost certain are Planemos. Anyways, hopefully you learned something from this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to share this with someone who might enjoy learning using video games. I'll see you guys in the next video, thank you for all your support, and if you do find out that there's other Planemos out there that I haven't mentioned, please post it in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye. And I'm going to accelerate time and see what happens to the solar system after thousands and millions of years. Can I actually destroy something? Oh, look at those orbits oscillating, this is beautiful. Anyway, see you guys later, bye bye.